Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to How to Leverage Attribution Models to Build Data-Driven Marketing Strategies. We're so excited that you're able to join us today. This webinar will last about 45 minutes with about 15 minutes at the end for Q&A. Please make sure to ask all your questions in the upper left box, the Q&A box, and we'll get to them at the end if we have time. This webinar will be recorded recorded and it will be sent out to everyone registered in the next couple of days as well. Hi, my name is Kelly Brown. I'm a senior account manager of affiliate marketing at Acceleration Partners. I've been in affiliate marketing for over 10 years on both the client side or the, the client side, the publisher side, and now the agency side. Acceleration Partners is an award-winning affiliate marketing agency focused on delivering brand-aligned customer acquisition programs for the world's largest brands, including Target, Reebok, and Adidas. And I'm really excited to introduce Michael Lobin from InfoTrust, joining us as well. Thank you so much, Kellen. Hello, everyone. I'm Michael. I'm uh, very excited uh, to join today's webinar. Uh, the topic of attribution is uh, very dear to my heart, and I understand uh, how many challenges organizations have today dealing with attribution. So I hope that you'll be able to shed some light on how to do it uh, uh, better uh, and uh, the steps that you can take if you're just getting started with attribution. As Kelly mentioned, I work for the company InfoTrust. Uh, InfoTrust is a global Google Analytics uh, 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 company. That's my company, and um, we specialize in helping enterprises uh, implement digital analytics solutions integrate their analytical platforms and apply data to make better marketing decisions. So today we're going to talk about quite a few topics, but first we're going to define attribution. Then we're going to talk about attribution modeling, attribution and lifetime value and best practices. So you can use this webinar to um, integrate some of the best practices that we talk about and move forward with some great marketing campaigns. So what is attribution? And I hope quite a few of you are laughing as you see this cartoon. It made me chuckle a little bit. Um, many of you have probably sat around the table with questions from your senior leaders was your marketing campaign profitable or not? And a lot of times you may not know based on the type of attribution your company is using. Attribution is a process used by merchants to assign a value to marketing channels throughout a consumer purchase, consumer's purchasing journey. It has become increasingly, increasingly important in the past five years, especially in the past few years, as consumers have changed the way that they shop. The explosion of marketing channels and devices has added layers of complexity to what was a few years ago, a relatively simple funnel. Many of you that have been in the industry for at least five years probably remember the easy three-step funnel. The funnel looks a lot different and a lot more complicated now. So we're gonna talk through the different types of attribution and try to help you understand what's available for you. So why is attribution important? Well, Google did a study in 2012 where they looked at purchase journeys of over 3,000 shoppers. All 3,000 of them took a different path to purchase. If you think about that, that is pretty amazing that every single person in this study used a different way to finalize their purchase. Why are marketers adopting attribution? Well, a lot has to do with justifying digital spending. You can't ask for budget if you don't have or if you can't prove an ROI or return on ad spend to your finance or leadership teams. You want to create the most effective media mix based on the true value towards conversion. You want to understand the funnel and the sales cycle to plan campaign campaigns. <laughs> and you want to be able to determine affiliate payouts um, and payments uh, based on the type of commission and what commissions you should be paying. There is a lot of confusion around attribution, which is why a significant number of B2C and B2B customer, uh, companies don't even have an attribution model in place. So as you can see, it's becoming more and more important. When in 2014, only 22.9% of total companies 
were using or even looking at multi-channel attribution models. And now in 2017, more than 50% are understanding how important multi-channel attribution models are. So what are the different types of attribution? First is first click. So um, I'm gonna go through a couple different slides and you'll see a customer comes to make a purchase and in a situation, um, a customer maybe browsed and saw a Facebook ad that you had posted for, let's, let's just say a beauty product. She clicked on the product, she went to your site, and then she decided, eh, I'm not gonna buy it right now. So later on, she goes to one of your affiliate partners, clicks through, then actually sees a display ad and engages with the display ad. But then finally, when she decides, yeah, I wanna buy that lipstick, I'm gonna go ahead and Google what she was going to shop for. And in this situation, 100% of the credit is going to go to the influencer or the opener, which would have been social. So all the other channels are not going to get any credit for that sale. Linear means that every single channel across the, the consumer's um, purchase journey will get a piece of the pie. So the same type of um, shopping behavior, but we're going to give 25% to social, affiliate display, and search. This can be a challenging uh, attribution model depending on how you're paying your partners. So for affiliate marketing, as an example, if you want to pay your affiliates on the same attribution that, that you're using internally, it's hard with loyalty partners to say, I'm going to pay pay you 25% of an order purchase, and then they're going to give that piece back to the customer. So something to keep in mind. And then there's the time decay model. So time decay basically gives credit to all of the channels that get touched, but it goes more to the closers. So what finalized her reason to make that purchase? And then you have U-shaped and position base where you're giving more credit to the opener and the closer with the channels in between are getting less credit, but everybody is getting a little bit of credit. Content bounty. So with the social influencers are really hot right now, as many of you probably know. Um, and if, if you understand even how you shop personally, you might read a blog and then later on, make a purchase with a different channel. Um, what we're finding is there's different types of attribution models, one called a content bounty, where you can give a content partner or blogger a bounty, whether it's a $10 fee, whatever you decide as that flat fee, because that content partner helped close the sale. But then um, in this situation, search is getting the full left click. And then you have add to cart. This is simply put, the item was put in a basket and we're, you're gonna give credit to the channel that initiated that add to basket. Finally, last click. This is the most popular attribution model, which many of you are probably aware of. So in this situation, depending on your cookie window, um, you're gonna give 100% of the attribution to the channel that closed the deal. So even though, even though a customer actually went through multiple channels to make that purchase, you're only giving credit to that last click. So uh, this is an interesting chart that um, we pulled from Impact Radius, one of our uh, affiliate marketing vendors that we work very closely with. Basically the last click dilemma, it oversimplifies the customer decision process. So you're simply saying that I'm gonna give 100% credit to the last click. You're not giving any credit to all those other touch points that a customer had to go through to make that choice. Excellent. So now we're gonna talk about attribution modeling. Thank you, Michael. Wonderful, thank you so much, Kelly. Uh, so now that we get a little bit of an overview of uh, different models that we have, uh, as uh, Kelly outlined, there's uh, definitely more than one. Uh, what I want to do is uh, maybe take a step back and um, uh, consider that there are really four problems, if you will, that marketers uh, have when it comes to attribution. So first we have intra-channel and multi-channel uh, types of attribution, meaning that, for example, uh, your customer uh, is looking for the product uh, on Google search, 
or using generic search, then maybe using brand search, and then completing a conversion. Or maybe it's a multi-channel where it's a combination of display, uh, social, and affiliate working together to generate a conversion. And that's one type of problems. On the other hand, we have a different type of problem which requires um, uh, integration between different platforms because we have to deal with offline integration as our marketing might take place online, but the actual conversion or the result of marketing might take place offline. As we can see, perhaps uh, she uh, searched uh, for the product uh, on her desktop, then decided to visit in store and check out the product, uh, and then that led to a conversion. Or when there is a cross device uh, where somebody is searching for the, uh, for the product on a mobile device, then on desktop, and then completes uh, the conversion. The reason this is important is because we need to understand what problems we are trying to solve. Each of these problems has different level of effort tied to it. And today, because we only have 45 minutes, we will focus on intra-channel and multi-channel attribution. Online to offline and cross-device tend to be more complex and require data integration within digital analytics and your backend system or your point of sale system. If, however, uh, those are the problems uh, uh, that you have in your organization, please uh, feel free to post them in chat and we can uh, send you uh, some resources or we can send you links uh, to our past webinars where we tackled uh, these uh, issues specifically. So the first step is for us to determine what is available with uh, the tools that we have. Certainly there are many uh, attribution technologists uh, that are available on the market. And uh, as we'll talk a little bit later, Google actually just recently unveiled at their Google Digital Next event, uh, their new product, uh, Google Attribution, and the Google Attribution 360. But with all of those uh, technologies, they're often very quick at deciding to buy a new tool. Uh, instead of looking at what is something that is available to us right now. So merely for the sake of this presentation, uh, we will take a look at what's available within technology like Google Analytics, the free version. And similar reports are available if you're using uh, uh, Adobe Omniture or if you're using uh, tools like uh, uh, IBM Parametrics. Uh, I doubt anyone is using Web Trends or other solutions. And uh, one of the most popular reports is multi-channel funnel reporting. And as we can see here, there are a couple of different types of reports within the suite of multi-channel funnel reporting. Uh, we have an overview report that allows us to see how uh, different uh, uh, devices, if you will, work together to generate a conversion. Uh, we have assisted conversion, uh, where we can see what marketing channels did not generate the conversion immediately or last click, but rather contributed to the conversion. So somebody maybe saw a display ad and then came back to the website uh, via direct or organic. We can see top conversion path, and we can see time lag and page length reports that show how long in days and interactions it took for the users to ultimately become our customers. And time lag and page length report, are, in my experience, some do not get as much attention as they should because if we are able to cut down the amount of time and effort it takes us to convert a customer, this allows us uh, to save in total or now advertising spend because we can say we are able to generate the same number of conversions or the same amount of revenue but with less interactions, meaning that our ads are more impactful and we do not need 10 touch points, we rather need six or seven to generate the same amount of revenue. Now we can look at assist and conversion path type of report. Uh, and here we have an example uh, where we are looking at a different uh, campaigns and how those campaigns have worked together uh, to generate a conversion and to generate total conversion value, which in the case of uh, e-commerce website would be revenue. So we can see referral traffic. Then we can see full uh, collection uh, type of campaign. And then there was a direct traffic to the website. So we can see a sequence of steps that led to our conversion. And that little icon next to full collection actually means 
that somebody saw our display advertisement but did not click on it. So within this report, we have a couple of different um, rows of conversion. So we have last interaction is the last interaction that precedes the conversion. Assist interaction is any interaction that is on conversion path but is not the last interaction. And first interaction is the first interaction on the conversion path. And basically, it is a kind of assist interaction. Now, the reason we want to know the difference between last interaction, assist interaction, and first interaction is, as Kelly mentioned, this is what uh, helps us start looking at attribution models and determine if a certain campaign is better at generating brand awareness and simply generating this first type of interaction with our prospect, or if a certain conversion is actually great at driving a, um, a customer to purchase. And for example, we, we, we often notice that um, uh, types of uh, uh, campaigns that focus on coupons or focus on uh, uh, some kind of sale, they're much better as uh, last interaction than first interaction. And that makes sense because if somebody is not aware of your business, maybe is not aware of uh, the products or the product quality, having a sale will not uh, lead them to believe that they should be buy from your website. But those uh, types of campaigns uh, can lead to a conversion once somebody has already been exposed to your brand. And on the next slide, uh, we can see um, how different campaigns, again, are working together. And you can see number of conversion, again, as we mentioned, and conversion value. So we notice that there have been six conversions, or what that means is there's been a great number of customers or potential customers that first came to the website as referral. So we want to understand what are our referral, obviously, traffic sources, and why is referral so good at uh, uh, making uh, this type of first interaction. Then we potentially retarget those people with our full collection. So they already came to the website. They know what we do. So now they can promote new products. And then they ended up converting as a result of direct traffic to our website. Now, what's interesting about these types of reports is on uh, top of the report, you can also change your look back window. And you can look all the way either 5 days, 30 days, or 90 days. And that look back window will allow you to see the number of different campaigns that had to work together to generate a conversion. And on the next slide, uh, uh, we can see, again, an example of how these reports are structured within Google Analytics. Uh, and in this case, we are looking at the top conversion path report, uh, which shows all of the unique conversion path that led to conversions, as well as the number of conversions from each path and the value of those conversions. So if you look at row number eight, we can see that Somebody had to click on our page search twice. Then they were exposed to our display campaign, maybe display remarketing campaign, and only then they completed the purchase. As we start changing the loopback window to more days, we will start to notice that uh, over time, more and more campaigns have to work together to bring person back to the website. Makes sense because you continuously have to remind the person of your website, of your existence, of your products, and bring them back to the website to ultimately complete a conversion. And as I mentioned before, uh, on the next slide, we can see that uh, uh, there is an integration with a Google Display Network. So you can see and connect activity between interactions. So uh, we can see that uh, somebody saw a display ad or a display video ad on YouTube. Maybe they did not click on it, but then they clicked on a referral ad or they came to the website organically. So a lot of organizations are often struggling with uh, figuring out how do we attribute the value to our display campaigns and to the value of those impressions. Well, for example, with uh, Google Analytics, uh, you can, can enable Google Display Network. If you use Google Analytics 360, there is a native integration between Google Analytics 360 and um, uh, 
double click a bid manager, double click campaign manager, that will allow you to see this. And hence, again, give you even more visibility in how uh, different brand campaigns uh, and display campaigns are performing. So once we have this type of basis for our analysis, we can actually start looking and comparing different attribution models. And on the next slide, we can see how different models are working together. So here is an example of us comparing the different channels, such as paid search, direct organic. And on top, uh, we have a couple of uh, options that we can select. We can select plus non-direct click, position-based, or first interaction model. We can customize which models we want to compare. And we can see how different marketing channel is performing and what value it brings based on the type of attribution model that we examine. A channel that predominantly initiates conversion path will have a higher conversion value according to the first interaction attribution model than it would according to the last interaction attribution model. Because again, obviously, uh, that type of uh, campaign generated awareness and generated uh, the person to come to the website for the first time. The key is to look at the movement, which channels are benefiting when you change your model and which ones are undervalued. At the end of the day, there is no perfect model or one model that fits all. And what you always want to do is test different attribution models and again, see how they are performing. Now, if you do not want to do this work yourself, uh, Google Analytics has data-driven attribution model. And uh, data-driven attribution model gives credit for conversion based on how people search for your business and decide to become your customers. It uses data from your account to determine which ads, keywords, and campaigns have the greatest impact on your business goals. And uh, what makes this uh, Available is Google's machine learning. So again, Google automatically studies uh, ads, keywords, and campaigns that are working together. And then based on those combinations, uh, Google will make suggestions of what model you should be using, or uh, it will showcase how different marketing channels should be valued. And again, on the screen, you can see that we can compare models. And you can uh, select your loopback window to see what models might work best with our customers that we had to acquire over the past 90 days versus the ones that we were able to acquire within the past 10 days. And this is just another example of uh, about data-driven attribution within Google Analytics 360 does. Uh, basically, it analyzes all visitor path to evaluate which touch points are most meaningful. And uh, based on this, it helps you build attribution model. Now, as we've alluded to before, earlier uh, this year, just maybe about uh, two months ago, uh, Google introduced a new product, uh, Google uh, Attribution. And uh, Google Attribution takes in data across AdWords, Google Analytics, and double-click search without any additional tagging. So you do not have to deploy new tags or new pixels on your website. So it collects all of the data. That it runs selected attribution model across different devices and channels, and then automatically sends those results uh, back to you for easy reporting uh, and uh, decisions on how to reallocate your marketing budget. And as we've mentioned, um, uh, it uh, out of the box integrates with other Google products. And uh, I think over time, we can see, or we might be able to see, uh, that uh, uh, it begins to integrate with other marketing channels, not just uh, uh, Google's properties. Uh, Google uh, at the GDN uh, made uh, a couple of interesting presentations around machine learning. And uh, Google Attribution is able to capitalize on uh, Google's machine learning uh, capabilities. So it analyzes each account's unique conversion patterns, comparing the path of customers who convert to those who do not, and um, then produces results and reports that you can uh, leverage. 
one of the most interesting things about uh, Google Attribution is uh, it allows you to see how online marketing channels generate offline sales. As you can see on point number three, Google has established relationships with firms that give it access to data for 70% of credit and debit card transactions across the United States. So you'll be able to attribute your in-store sales to different types of marketing campaigns and different combinations of marketing campaigns. And uh, here's an example of the project that we worked with, uh, Pelican Water System, an omnichannel retailer uh, that sells uh, water purification systems online, as well as uh, via a call center. And obviously the goal was uh, to analyze the impact of online advertising on their offline purchase and sales activity. Uh, so we had to integrate their digital analytical platform uh, we had to integrate their CRM system, which was Salesforce, and their call center system. But as the result of this project, they were able to attribute 15% of all offline conversions to pay-per-click and to specific campaigns. So now let's uh, uh, talk a little bit about the lifetime value. So the first question is, well, why are we jumping around, right? We just talked about attribution modeling and how different uh, marketing channels work together to bring person to the website. Why lifetime value? Well, great questions. So lifetime value is actually one of the keys to the success of uh, overall marketing and uh, of um, uh, attribution. The reason I say that is because as we look at uh, different attribution models, or as we think about how do we optimize our marketing budget, the question is always, well, we want to optimize for a conversion. But at the end of the day, generating one conversion or generating one sale on the website is actually not the end goal. What we want to do is be able to see what marketing channels or what combination or what marketing mix allows us to bring in customers that become the most profitable customers for our business. And that's the key differentiator. We do not just want to run attribution models to see which marketing or what marketing mix generates a conversion. We want to see what marketing mix generates the most profitable customers or the most profitable customer segment because then we can use that information to create similar audiences and to create a new campaigns to target prospective customers that are maybe similar to our current most profitable customers. Uh, one of the people that pioneered the uh, research of uh, customer centricity uh, is uh, Peter Fader. And actually, uh, Peter and I have done a webinar uh, months ago where we spent a lot of time discussing how to calculate lifetime value and how to leverage lifetime value for your marketing and attribution. As customer centricity helps you really increase your profitability and focus on the right customers, not just on all customers. So if you're just getting started uh, in the field of uh, lifetime value, there are a couple of things, a couple of questions uh, uh, for you to consider or think through. One is how much does it cost to acquire a new customer? And can we segment our customers based on lifetime value? For example, as we, over the past, let's say, months or three months, quarter, if we've acquired X number of customers, which ones of those customers do we consider to be least profitable and which ones do we consider to be most profitable? And then based on that most profitable segment, what marketing channels drive the most profitable customer types and what marketing channels drive one-time conversions? Because if we are able to determine what marketing mix drives the most profitable customer segment, we can potentially greatly overspend on generating the initial conversion. It's perhaps it's totally fine for me to lose money when I generate the first transaction with the customer who I know will become very profitable for my business because I know that over the long term, I'll be able to make that money back. In order for us to do this, 
it really comes down to the integration between what happens pre-acquisition and hence uh, the topic of today's presentation, marketing mix and attribution modeling, and what happens after post-acquisition. And the post-acquisition data very often does not live in tools like Adobe Omniture or Google Analytics. Post-acquisition data, especially for Omnichannel or retailers, lives in your CRM, lives in your loyalty program, maybe in your call center or other platforms. And so the question is, how do we integrate those together? And this type of, uh, if you will, seamless integration of online, in-store, I mean, the customer support or phone call uh, data, when integrated together, really allows you to see how marketing works all the way from beginning to generating exposure to generating our long-term, most profitable customer segments. And then we can uh, really uh, put this um, uh, to a good use in our ongoing or everyday marketing. So here we can take a look at the flow. Somebody is exposed to our display advertisement, and maybe as a result of our display ad, they come to the website. And then on the website, uh, they decide, well, I'm not actually going to buy on the website, I'd rather buy uh, via calling uh, this type of organization. So they generate offline sales. And when they call the company, they enter their offline transaction in our backend system. Uh, we maybe enter their loyalty program in our backend system. But then what we can do is take that information from the CRM or from the loyalty program and upload it back into analytics. And then via native integration between analytics and our media buying platform, such as DoubleClick Bid Manager, we can start targeting people that completed offline transactions or are likely to come to the website and complete the transaction offline. But in this case, we are able to tie online and offline channels together. And uh, here's an example of a report that can be available to you right within tools like Google Analytics, where we can see different marketing channels. And this is just the last touch. So this report will be even more powerful uh, when we can start looking at this uh, using the different attribution models. And we can see cost for each marketing channel. We can see cost of goods sold. We can even add advertising overhead, right? If we are working with an agency and they run the campaigns for us, there is an advertising overhead for that. The amount of revenue that we generate, whether it's online or offline, and then we can actually see the ROI. And this is the true ROI that, again, takes into account not just online transactions, but offline transactions and such things as advertising overhead. And one of the best things of this type of report is all of this available within one platform. So you do not need 10 different platforms or worse, yes, or worse, uh, uh, 10 different Excel sheets where you are tracking all of this information. And uh, here's another example of a project uh, that we've done uh, with um, another retailer. Uh, and as a result of this uh, type of uh, integration and uh, attribution modeling, uh, they saw a 300% return on that spend across their top three paid channels and 19% increase in total purchases. So again, everything that we are discussing today is not fiction. Uh, there is uh, uh, clear opportunities to take action. But the key, I would say, is for us to get started somewhere and to test. And with that, I want to turn this uh, over back to Kelly uh, for us to look at uh, some of the recommendations to get started and best practices. And just a reminder, if you have any questions about the material that uh, Kelly and I are covering, please post them in the Q&A panel, and we're going to address them shortly. Thank you, Michael. So what does everything mean that we just talked about? I know it's a lot of information. First, we went over the different type of attribution models. We went over all the great tools um, that Michael shared with us. So how do you act on everything? So anything that you do, you want to bet on the data. Data is critical when you're making decisions about any marketing campaigns. First, you as the merchant or the brand you know your customer better than anybody does. 
You know your customer better than the agency that you work with does. Learn about your customer. Work with other teams that know a lot about your customer. If you sell beauty, for example, maybe, um, maybe somebody buying beauty is more of an impulse buy and she tends to buy it that day. Maybe you sell furniture and maybe you need a longer cookie window because it takes you know, a couple weeks or a month to make that decision that he or she wants to spend thousands of dollars on furniture. Use all the knowledge that you have about your customer to get the data to where you need it to be to make smart decisions about upcoming marketing campaigns. Partner with the right teams. So if you're in a digital marketing department, you work with so many great teams outside of just your, your team alone. Partner with CRM teams, partner with finance teams, really work together to share the data. Tell them this is the type of campaign that I wanna run and see if they have any additional insights outside of the tools that you're seeing. Because as Michael alluded to, there are other tools that probably other teams are also using. Try to match it all up together. Another really important thing is to be transparent with your partners. I come from the client side and now I'm on the agency side as well. It is really important to tell your agencies, your vendors, your partners, what you're seeing internally. As a great example, in affiliate marketing, we manage thousands of publishers. In the tool that we're using, the affiliate marketing vendor tool, we might be seeing a great return on ad spend. However, when you put it on paper and you work with your finance and CRM team, you may see a publisher that's really promoting a lot of clearance items and really pulling your margin down. So you wanna make sure you understand that. And then you wanna make sure that you can talk to the partner and say, hey, how can we improve this campaign? And how can we be smarter together so I can get my contribution margin or whatever your KPIs are up um, for, for your team. And finally, create a scorecard. So everything that, that Michael talked about, you know, you could do it in Google Analytics. Do it with these other teams. Get all the data that, that you can in front of you to make those decisions. So a scorecard is an example for affiliate marketing. Don't look at affiliate marketing as one, one line item. Look at all of your partners individually. Put together the net sales that you're seeing. Put down the contribution margin you're seeing. Add the customer data if you can get to that, which you know maybe if you talk to your CRM team, that is something you can get to. Look at the new customers that each publisher is driving for you. Look at how many customers are reactivating after they've lapsed. It's really important to, be, to have that data in front of you. And also, as Michael said, nothing replaces testing. Digital marketing, everything that we're doing and talking about is gonna change within a month, in a couple of months. It is important to constantly test. So maybe an attribution model that you've had in place for a couple of years isn't really working for you anymore because maybe you have some really great new marketing campaigns that you wanna run, but you're on a last click model and you can't promise your team that I'm gonna drive this ROI because of that model in place. But also remember the value of those touch points, so every touch point a customer sees, the value of that is really for you and your team to decide. And there's no wrong or right way to make that decision. It is up to the goals of your organization and what you value the most. Do you value revenue? Do you value the customer? It is really up to you to make that decision. So finally, now that we went through the different types of attribution, the great tools and that you have potentially at your fingertips, it's a simple question, was your marketing campaign profitable or not? With all of the insights, and if you can really work with these other teams, you could sit around the table in a boardroom and talk to your leadership team and have that data in front of you you're going to be the smarter marketer. And then when it comes to 2018 planning and you're trying to get budget for a campaign that you want to run or your marketing channel that you believe in, you have that data in front of you to get that, to get to the next step. Um, and you also have the data in front of you to potentially talk about testing a new attribution model. So with everything, we hope that you can feel more comfortable 
as a lot of you are probably getting into planning for next year already, and to make those decisions. With that being said, thank you so much for taking time um, to spend with myself and Michael. We really appreciate it, and we hope that you can use everything that you've learned today. So now we're going to go and um, take some questions from the Q&A box. Uh, perfect, Kelly. And uh, there have been a few questions uh, that were submitted, and I uh, tried to answer some of them. Uh, but uh, uh, we can also uh, go through them. Uh, one open question, uh, when it is valuable time to pay for attribution software as opposed to using Google Analytics? Uh, so I can uh, start. In, in my opinion, the right time is when you feel like you got everything that you could from the tool like Google Analytics, right? Uh, a lot of times, uh, you know, when we speak with different uh, technology vendors uh, and uh, we hear different presentations, uh, it's it's hard uh, you know to figure out what the tool exactly does uh, versus what you know marketing uh, collateral says it does right so that, that's why you try to begin using the technology that is available to you and uh, determine what are the limitations that you find for example with the tool like Google Analytics right? once you're able to find those limitations then you can use those limitations as buying criteria to get uh, uh, another of, let's say, more sophisticated or paid uh, analytics platform. There are a number of uh, very good uh, paid analytics platforms, but I would say in order to make the best decision, you need to build a buying criteria. And the best way to build the buying criteria is to really outline what's not working in your attribution modeling process right now. Because there is no perfect software that will do everything for you. Uh, next question we have, uh, how can one best address the viewability fraud issue with regard to display advertising? I'll try to address. Uh, uh, Julian, it's a, it, it's a great question. Uh, in fact, uh, Mark Preacher, the, the CMO of uh, PNG, raised a very similar question uh, just about a month ago at, at a marketing conference um, uh, where he said, you know, where, where he talked about um, uh, digital analytics uh, value chain. So I think one is being sure in your own data, right? A lot of times, uh, you know, uh, organizations that we talk with or work with uh, start saying that uh, analytics is the directional tool. Right? But, I mean, can you really afford for digital analytics to be a directional tool? Where else would you spend a you know, million or $10 million a month on advertising knowing that the analytics that you get is directional? Right? Only in marketing, we get to say uh, things like that. So I think the first thing that you can do is start with your own data and make sure that your data that you have control over is accurate. You can also deploy uh, certain technologies to, for example, validate that uh, uh, pixels, that server ads uh, are running properly. Um, that's uh, something that I can recommend uh, if you're interested. Uh, as far as uh, other uh, fraud issues, uh, unfortunately, there is no one global standard that does it. Uh, there are some technologies uh, uh, that, again, we can recommend uh, for you to use, but uh, I'm afraid there is no one platform that, that covers uh, uh, this problem. It's uh, more of an industry challenge that I don't think has, not, has been yet addressed. Uh, Kelly, anything to add on that question? No, I think you covered everything. Um, I think there's still a lot of conversations about the fraud issue with display advertising. Excellent. Uh, so the next uh, question uh, from our anonymous viewer uh, is uh, for Google cross-device tracking if someone is on the same IP address uh, or is it solely based uh, on if signed in or not? So if uh, on your website you have the ability to track uh, if the user or if you have a sign-in uh, capabilities, you're actually better off uh, implementing uh, what's called the uh, Google Analytics uh, user ID. And uh, when you implement a Google Analytics user ID that allows you to tie visitor across different devices, uh, you can also, for example, when you send an email to your registered user, you can pass through their visitor ID 
via that email. So when that email is open on a mobile device, you will be able to capture that ID and you'll be able to tie a mobile visitor along this uh, uh, desktop visitor. And this way, it's not really tied to two of the IP address. It is, uh, you are able to really stitch data together across different devices. So I hope uh, this is helpful. Yeah, Michael, I have another question here um, that I can answer. How would you recommend approaching attribution model testing? So I think it's really important to um, make sure you don't do anything overnight. <laughs> you can make a lot of changes um, pretty quickly. Um, be prepared to sign up for a testing period. And one thing to keep in mind, if you're a big retailer, you might not want to do it during the holidays in Q4, um, maybe something in one of your downtimes. Look at the different ways that um, Google Analytics, for example, is measuring each of your channels. A lot of the tools that Michael showed you earlier can be really helpful and beneficial. And then look at how it's going to affect your overall marketing mix compared to what you're using now. So if you're on a last click attribution, compare what the new model is showing you. So for affiliate, how much credit would affiliate get on this new model compared to what it was previously getting? Is it more or less? And a lot of channels, it depends. Some channels like affiliate and search tend to be more closers. Other channels like social and display tend to be more influencers or um, openers. So I think it's really important to make sure that you use the tools that Michael talked about and to also um, be transparent with your teams. And one thing that I also wanted to note, it's really important that people in your organization understand the type of attribution model you're on and how it works. You as a digital marketer, be that person in the room to explain, this is how last click works. We have a seven day cookie window and the last touch is gonna to get credit. You can use that and then help power those meetings and have more you know, helpful conversations. Because I think a lot of times people don't necessarily understand what attribution model you're on or even what the word attribution means as an example. Um, Michael, can you compare other attribution platforms to the presented Google attribution? Do you want to speak to that? Yes and no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, unfortunately, it's, it's difficult to, uh, to compare these, especially in a very short uh, period of time, not knowing uh, if you will your business or the business of the person who is submitting the question. Uh, I will say that a couple of uh, platforms that we worked with and had uh, good success with was Visual IQ and Convertrum. Uh, the reason it's difficult for me to compare those platforms with Google Attribution or Google Attribution 360 is because it's a very new product and uh, we've only had very limited exposure. So we could not really run it uh, across uh, some of the large campaigns that our client Virtual, we have tested uh, and uh, had again uh, seen uh, quite a bit of success. If you want to compare, I believe uh, Gartner has uh, did, a, uh, did a study in the past where they uh, compared different technologies and Visual IQ and Convertra were in the top right quadrant. So uh, if you do not have exposure with different um, analytics attribution platforms, I will start with those two technologies. That's where we have seen some success. And um, Michael, I'd like to add to that. From my experience as well, when you look at other attribution platforms, remember that different technologies or platforms may track differently. So Google Analytics, what is a true last click touch? Is it truly the last touch? Is it the last click? Whereas other um, attribution models such as Core Metrics, um, last click, if a customer, for example, is already on um, your website initially, and then within that cookie window, they change, they, they click on a toolbar for an affiliate, um, it may not track to the affiliate marketer for that toolbar. It may go to um, the direct load or the initial, um, the initial touch. So something to keep in mind, so if you are looking at other platforms like outside of Google Analytics, it's really important to ask those questions when you talk to those vendors to understand exactly how they're, they're tracking on those models that we discussed on first click, last click. How does that technology work?
Another question that we have is uh, how do you advise taking action on the different uh, GA tools I mentioned earlier? Or how would you, uh, how would we translate this into a weighted attribution model? I think I would need a little bit more maybe clarification uh, uh, for the second part of the question in terms of uh, how to translate this uh, uh, into action. We always uh, big fans of uh, uh, setting up a marketing experiment, right? And if uh, we see that, obviously, you, you do not have control, let's say, over direct traffic, right? So I would say leaving that uh, channel aside, right? You have a control over uh, your search campaigns, over your display campaigns, and then running uh, some tests where you limit, for example, your search campaigns only to target new people, or you uh, run uh, uh, certain campaigns, uh, certain display campaigns, uh, just targeting uh, or using for remarketing uh, and being able to see if that impacts uh, uh, your conversions uh, or if, uh, again, that generates uh, additional incremental revenue. So that would be my suggestion for how to begin putting these uh, different models to use. If there is a more specific question, uh, please feel free to email me uh, and uh, and I'll happily try to provide more uh, clarification. So it looks like we covered um, the questions, most of the questions that came through. So thank you so much for all of your great questions. We really appreciate that. Um, remember that this webinar was recorded and it will be emailed out in the next few days if you registered for the webinar. And remember, if you have any questions, um, feel free to contact myself or Michael, um, Kelly Ground, um, www.accelerationpartners.com, or Michael at InfoTrust, infotrustllc.com. We really appreciate you taking your time um, and learning more about attribution. And hopefully, you can use everything that you learned today um, in the next few months. Thank you again. Thank you, everyone.